<clears throat> last week. We had an amazing time at the bishops. Um, it's 11.29. I'm going to tell you, even though Dusty's here, I'm still going to talk about him to his face. He summed that whole day up. The service was so good. The bishop did such an excellent job. She is amazing. And when we got back to Kelty's, the church had been unlocked all day. So he let out the other two ladies who had gone with us. And I said, do you mind just staying here until I get the church locked up? Because it's been, you know, unlocked all day. And I just, if somebody's in there, I'd like to have somebody out here to call the police or whatever. And so he said, oh, yeah, I'll stay and make sure everything's okay. And then when I got everything locked up and I said, Lord, that was fine. Thanks for staying. So what do you think about today? And this one sentence I think summed it up. He said, if I had gone through earlier what I went through today, I would have made sure I was in United Methodist a lot sooner. Oh. Is that not the sweetest thing? I have told that and told that. I just thought that was the sweetest thing. So for this service, I put, you'll see that things are a little bit stripped down, uh, less colorful. We've got the um, burlap on, and that is all to remind us about the service and it's really to bring us down and there'll be a little bit about that not a very long message but a little bit but i put from the book of worship um ash wednesday emphasizes a dual encounter we confront our own mortality and confess our sin before god within the community of faith this service will reflect on the dual themes of sin and death in the light of god's redeeming love in jesus christ so I just wrote that out in case some of you want to take this with you and maybe you're not familiar with this service. Maybe you're from a different denomination that didn't even do this service or uh, maybe you're in a United Methodist Church that didn't do it. So we have gathered here. So let's uh, greet each other with the greeting that's printed there on the page. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts, and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning um, is Psalm 51, and we'll have another scripture within the text of the message, but we're going to go ahead and read Psalm 51, just verses 1 through 10, but um, be sure of how it ends with verse 10. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We're going to go from that into our message. Too often with our Lenten journey, um, we see it simply as a journey that is inward. And it is indeed a self-reflective time. It's a time for us to do an inward self-examination, guided by... Um, questions that Methodists have asked since the beginning of the movement. And we get this asked of us as ministers um, every year, how is it with your soul? 
And I just like the way that question presents itself. It presents itself in a powerful way. And Lynn is a perfect time for all of us, no matter what spectrum we are on, to ask ourselves, how is it with our soul? So as we go into our Lenten experience, it's a time for us to examine our soul. But we really don't need it to stop there because God really does not want it to stop there. The reason he wants us to be well within our soul is so that we can project that into the world that we live in that is all around us. We need to not only ask, how is it with your soul, but how is that affecting the world that you live in? How is that impacting or bettering your faith community that you are a part of? How is that going on to serve in your church or your family? How it is with your soul? So that's not a new concept. We've been doing that for years. Um, it kind of echoes the great commandment. Uh, to just love the Lord God with all your heart and then love others um, as you would wish to be loved yourself. But we can't stop there. We have to focus on getting things right with God and then focus on how we use that relationship that is right with God um, to create a good relationship with others. After all, what have we asked God for in verse 10 here? Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, this whole psalm of, of 51 was written uh, by the psalmist David, and it was when Nathan had come knocking on his door, kind of to let him know that somebody's ring doorbell had showed up um, where he saw Bathsheba, and where he had her husband killed, and he had been caught with his hand in the cookie jar, so to speak. We all have. And I want us to look at our life, because we start with a life, um, a pretty innocent life. I think we come here as selfish people. Babies are mostly selfish. They think of no one but themselves, right? They don't think of how little sleep you're getting. They think of what they want in life. And so we start with that. And then before long, what happens? The world enters in to us. We are in the world, but then the world becomes a part of us. And as the world becomes a part of us, things start to happen. It starts to infiltrate our life. And we think that won't happen because it's just one cigarette. It's just one drink. It's just a socially accepted thing to smoke that or to take that pill. And it's not really going to hurt anything. But before you know it, we have hurt a whole lot of things. And one of the greatest things that we hurt is each other's feelings. And then we start to not feel good about ourselves. And we see ourselves falling short of the glory of God. And this, just a little bit darker and a little bit here, is exactly how <clears throat> Satan wants us. This is just where he wants us. And here's what he'll do to make sure, hey, he'll stir it up a little bit within us, doesn't he? So all of a sudden, the pureness of the little baby and that life that we live, in no time at all, has been stirred by Satan and has turned into a pretty tainted life. And that's what had happened to David. What he wanted in his desires overtook what God wanted for him and overtook the medications of his heart. But he's asking for a clean heart. He's saying, I'm going to pour myself out to you, God. And that's exactly what he did. He poured himself out into God, and that's what we hear here in the Psalms. So where do you go for your rest restoration or joy? I want us to think about that in the coming 40 days. Where do we go to be purged and to be made clean? Because we all have that desire to be made clean, and we all have the need for a cleansing, a cleansing to occur. And an open heart is the only part that is going to be 
cleanse. So it's important for us to come to worship, and it's important for us to come to worship in a hungry way, wanting, expecting, and waiting for something to happen. We talked about the transfiguration of the Lord last Sunday, and now it is time for us to be transformed and made right. So when we are not in a worship where we are setting, where we are accepting of the things going on, when we're not worshiping in a way that focuses strictly on Christ, then you know who is off? We are, right? And that's what was happening to David. He knew things just weren't quite right in his life, even though he had obtained everything he wanted. It's like shopping in Walmart with plenty of money, but you got the cart with the wheel that wobbled. <laughs> you get everything you want, but it just isn't quite right. And the psalmist felt that too. But there's that plea, there's that hope, there's that remembrance of the wholeness of joy that the relationship with our Creator brings. So the psalmist sought it in this psalm, and that encourages us to seek it. The psalmist worshipped, and that encourages us to worship. The psalmist was made right again, and that helps us know that we are going to be made right again. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and put a new and right spirit within me. That's our prayer. And it was David's prayer, too. And after Psalm 51, even though they're not listed in chronological order, after Psalm 51, David wrote another psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> there is an invitation to the observance of Lenten. Um, discipleship, and again, I thought that might be something you would want. I'm going to read it out of the book of discipline because it's bigger. But uh, you can read it off of your your program there, and you're also welcome to keep it. Um, I also want to tell you the book of worship has said that you are to come forward for the ashes and return to your seats, and then to come back for communion. So, I just want everybody to know, I guess, that it wasn't my idea to have you get up twice. Let's have the invitation uh, to the observance of Lenten discipleship, and then we'll have a thanksgiving over the ashes. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penance and forgiveness. They were restored and restored to participation in the life of Christ. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to observe a holy lift by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our moral nature, let us bow before our Creator and Redeemer. And now we have a thanksgiving prayer that we pray over the ashes, and then we'll have the imposition of the ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penance. 
so that we may remember that only by your precious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now we'll begin. Adam, if you would like your ashes on your forehead, let me know. If not, just hold your hand out, and I'll put them right there on your hand. Or if you do not have the imposition of the ashes, just don't come forward. But let's come down the center aisle and receive those. We'll end with our communion service. And we remember that it was the night before Jesus uh, gathered, was to be crucified. He gathered with his disciples and he took the bread. And the amazing thing is, he gave thanks for this walk that he was about to take. He lifted the bread and gave thanks to God. And then he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And ask them to take and eat it. And the only thing he asks of them and of us is that as often as they do this, they do it in remembrance of what has been done for them. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. He lifted it to the heavens and he gave thanks to God. And then he gave it to his disciples and he told them, take and drink this. This is my blood that has been shed for you and shed for many. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of what has been done for you. So in remembrance of these great and mighty acts that were done on our behalf by our Savior, who is living still, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. We ask God to make this bread and this juice be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for this world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And we come to proclaim that great mystery of faith that we so are so privileged to be a part of. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. The elements have been consecrated, so you may come and partake in those. But before you do, uh, let's cleanse our hearts with a prayer and end with the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, we are no more worthy to partake in these elements then we will be after putting before you those times in our lives that we have failed you but we come to let you know that we have failed you and we recognize that in your presence but we also come to ask that you make in us a clean 
and pure heart. We ask that you forgive us of the times we have failed you, and we know our ignorance and even asking for that forgiveness. But we come before you admitting that in hopes that we will not be as eager or as ready or as likely to sin against you in those ways again. And we thank you for the grace that does make us worthy to come before this table where you have made room for everyone. For we realize today that Christ gave his life for us all. And we are among the blessed ones who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior to go and live with you in your kingdom forever and ever. Amen. So we come to you now with the confidence of the children of God to pray as we have been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the Lord As we leave this place, I pray that we leave in more knowledge and acknowledgement of the presence of Jesus Christ that goes with us, cleansing our heart as we go. Amen.